Would the Cowboys <laughs> winning in Miami make you trust them? It would. Uh, and to me, that that's really a reflection on how much I respect this Dolphins team. The way I see it is this. If the Dolphins were in the NFC, I would probably view them as the second best team in the entire conference behind, of course, San Francisco. So if Dallas were to take them out on the road, uh, given the level of competition, given how well the Dolphins defense is playing right now, which I think I'll get to a little bit later as well, I would trust them in the way that I trusted them before this last loss, which is I viewed them as the second best team in the NFC. Would it make me think they're better than San Francisco? No, but I didn't think they were better than San Francisco before. I don't think any team in the NFL is better than San Francisco. Mm -hmm. However, what we have seen is this inability to go on the road, not as Stephen A said, build up a lead and benefit from that. So if they were to go into Miami, play a very good defense, very good defense in the Miami Dolphins, and then be able to defend Miami's run game, which is good as well. It's very different from Buffalo, but it's explosive. I would be very impressed with that win. I don't see how you could not be impressed by that caliber of victory against such a good team. No, unfortunately, Mina, I'm going to have to disagree. It wouldn't cause me to trust them anymore because I've seen them have some level of prosperity during the regular season. You know, when it comes to the Cowboys, Mina, you know, the only thing that matters is the postseason. We've seen them have these ebbs and flows. We've seen yeah. Dak throw 35 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, and lose into the first round of the playoffs. We've seen them have great success in the regular season. So I'm not going to put any more trust in. I, the, I'm, I'm, I'm devoid of trust with the Cowboys now because I've seen them over the <laughs> last decade, and they build me up, and they keep telling me I'm going to get this for Christmas, and every time Santa comes and he doesn't drop off the package that they promised me. So, no, unfortunately for me, I am not going to have any more trust in them if they were to win this ball game. All right, so we would have to trust them more. And the, the win would have to mean something. We, we have, and, and rightfully so, had a conversation about Dallas, who they are home versus on the road. The last five times yeah. that Dak and this Cowboys team have gone on the road and played a winning team, they're 0-5. They, they, they get beat on an average right. of 32 to 18. Dak's got eight touchdowns and eight interceptions. So if they were to go on the road versus a really good football team who is a winning record and beat them, we can't ignore it. That, that, that would be completely outrageous and, so, and, and, and biased in many ways for us to can do. I, can I, can I, the, can, can I ask you? I want, I want to ask one question. So they lose five games in a row on the road against teams with winning records by average margin of 32 to 18, and one victory gives you renewed hope. No, but it, but we'd have to we'd have to value it. We'd have to appreciate it. They finally we they, we we can no longer say, well, the Cowboys haven't gone on the road and beat a good football team or a win a team with a winning record, and we can't say that anymore. So there has to bear it has to bear some weight now. On the Look other at side, you being being nice smart. about the Cowboy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. here you. comes the butt. Um, here comes the butt. Yeah. <laughs> Two weeks ago, I called the Monday Night Football game when the Titans went into Miami and beat them. Mm -hmm. Now, it was, you know, 14-point lead, and they fluky. somehow have the miracle comeback, and things went their way, but it did happen. So, in, in one part, I, right. I go, well, we can't sit here and make the comment of, well, you can't go on the road, and the couch. if they do, on the other side, I, I, I'm not going to sit here and go, Shannon, what, you know what? That's the team that could beat the San Francisco 49ers because they went on the road and beat the Dolphins when I just watched the Titans right. do it. Go ahead, yeah. man, take off. I mean... I don't feel that way about any team with the San Francisco 49ers right now, candidly, outside of the Ravens. Um, I, I think, Dan, you know, you pointed out that the Dolphins lost to the Titans. All of the great teams, including, by the way, the 49ers, have weird losses this season. Right. They did, of course, when Trent and Debo were out. Um, I, I think, though, this game in particular is such a benchmark game for both of these teams. They have to beat the allegations, so to speak. Dallas with the road stuff. Miami. Uh, you know, having to beat with, with a good, good team. team. I, I mm -hmm. feel just that we have to say, whoever comes out of this game with a victory does deserve more trust as a playoff team. Does it mean I think Dallas can beat San Francisco? No. Does it mean I think Miami is the odds-on favorite in the AFC? No, it's probably right. still Baltimore. However, it would be an impressive victory for both sides. And I think it would obviously depend on the nature of the win, but I'm willing yeah. to come out of it with a bit of a changed mind based on what we see on the field. Well, I'm different than both of y'all. I look at the Cowboys like one of my exes. They look good, but I don't trust them. <laughs> wow. It's fair. It's fair. It's fair. Or to be an ex. Totally fair. Wow. <laughs> Shannon. I just say which one. Like Shannon, Shannon dropping bars. <laughs>
<laughs> That's going to get quoted and retweeted and hearted and yeah. liked and subscribed. What oh, happens my if goodness. the X change their ways, Shannon? Uh, what happens if the Cowboys go into Miami and what? they stop one of the Dan. best rushing attacks in football and, and Dak in this offense looks as explosive on the road as it does at home? Maybe, maybe, they're, maybe they've changed their ways a little bit. And you might get back I'll, together with that ex. I, 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 ho I hope it works out. For, I hope it works out well for her and the next partner. <laughs> wow. Hey, is uh, Purdy the most important player on the Niners' offense? No, because if you think about it, look how Brock Purdy looked once he got Christian McCaffrey. That offense went to another level when they made the trade. And I knew what was going to happen because his dad played in the West Coast system, and I knew this system was tailor-made for what Christian McCaffrey can do really well. You see, what he does is that he opens it up. He's like when you add water to uh, a shea by Laportier. It opens it up. It allows you to get the full body, the full taste of this offense. Because now when you stick the ball in his belly or you stretch it out wide and you pull it, you have Debo running scot-free. You have Ayuk running scot-free. You have a George Kittle running scot-free. It is Christian McCaffrey. He's number one across the board. Yards from scrimmage, rush yards, yards after contact, first down yards, 10-yard runs. He's that. Brock Purdy has just has been just as good. But for me and being in this system and knowing it backwards and forwards, it's the running back because he allows them that play-action pass, which they're so deadly at, is because of Christian McCaffrey. I agree. Uh, Brock Purdy has been excellent in this offense. He is accurate. Uh, the timing throws are there. He has full command of it. And I do think it's looked better with him than past quarterbacks in Kyle Shanahan's system. But we actually did see Christian McCaffrey with one of those quarterbacks, Jimmy Garoppolo, and the change in that offense after the McCaffrey trade preceded Brock Purdy being elevated as a starter. You saw the beginning of this transformation, a transformation that I, I really don't think we've seen the likes of in the modern NFL, frankly. I mean, Christian McCaffrey on tape is clearly, to me, the straw that stirs the drink in this offense. The fact that when you put him on the football field, he can do literally everything. He can run routes like a wide receiver. He's one of, if not the best, pure runners right now in the league. He can block. It allows Kyle Shanahan to dictate to defenses in a way that Kyle has never been able to do before. If you are in base, we will throw the ball on your linebackers. If you are in your sub package, we will run it up your gut. You are able to do all of this because of Christian McCaffrey. Uh, what he is doing right now, the way he commands extra attention on the field, never seen anything like this, frankly, from a running back um, who can also run the ball the way he does. It is truly, truly special stuff. And to me, he, even though Purdy is playing extremely well, McCaffrey is the most important player on that team. Before I give my answer, Shannon, add water to what? My cognac is called Shea by Laportier. When you add a drop of water to it, <laughs> it opens it up. It allows you to get the full taste. You uh, taste those marshmallows, that mm. caramel. I need to get you a bottle. Yeah, it costs you a hundred bucks, though. I gotta pay for it. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a pay for Stephen pay. A? No, I'm not, you definitely I'm not, I'm would not, not charge Stephen A. <laughs> whoa, 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 time out. He's, he's, he's not gonna charge Stephen A, but he's charging you and I, Dan. Dan is so Just... cheap. Dan, I don't know if you know, I, Shan, I don't know if you know that. Dan is unbelievably cheap. Mm -mm. Ain't nothing, <laughs> okay. there's nothing free but salvation. And ministers have found a way to charge for that. So ain't nothing free for Shannon, from Shannon Sharp, bro. <sighs> I can't uh, get over that Yards in this line. Niners offense seem to come uh, free. Uh, Shannon, where can people purchase this? All right, this, Dan, if they tell want us to. why the quarterback is more important. <laughs> All right. He's going to say McCaffrey. Yeah, no, 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 no. I hate this question. He, he believes McCaffrey. I hate this question. <laughs> I take it personally when both, you say you hate the question, but keep going. Because both players have elevated this <laughs> offense that if you've paid any attention to the NFL over the last just about 10 years, in some cases 30 or 40, the ones that Shannon played in specifically to this offense, but specifically to Kyle, you know that both these players have taken this offense to levels that a very good offense yeah. that it has been hasn't reached. And so yeah. most important is always going to be the quarterback. Most impactful, we could have a little bit of a conversation about. Because, again, both these guys have made this offense, and I would say made this play caller different and better. Mina, we've talked about this. The offense is a yeah. different offense and a more advanced offense because of Purdy. But I don't know if there's a player, Shannon, this is like what we call ace formation. You know this. 
McCaffrey's going to insert between the, the B gap, the, the, the center, excuse me, the guard and the tackle. Most of the times when this happens, he's going to check down over the ball, right? This is not a broken play for nope. the people at home. This is a designed <laughs> play by Kyle Shanahan. I've never seen this on purpose where you take the receiver, Shanahan, Shannon, you clear people, and then instead of using the tight end on this route, you use the tailback on this route, which is essentially a corner or a rail or a wheel route. I personally yeah. have never seen that. Maybe it's happened before. I think that... <laughs> Let like me ask you a question, ways, Dan. An oh, example. Go. If you took this offense and you replaced Purdy with another top five, six quarterback, your Dax, your Staffords, whatever, how would that compare to if you placed replaced Christian McCaffrey with another running, a top five or six running back in this league? Yeah, like my my comparison would be this: if if we took Brock off of this offense and we put in. Um, Dak Prescott, do I still think this offense hums pretty consistently? Yes. That's not a knock on Brock Purdy. It, it, it's the, right. He's a very good player. If we take McCaffrey off and we put in, I, I don't know, like an, a Camara or an Aaron Jones, I don't think that they do the exactly. things with those guys that they do with McCaffrey. He agrees with daddy. us. Yeah. Whoop daddy us. Yeah, and it, <laughs> part of the problem is this, why I hate it, is they're, they're two of the top three or four MVP yes. candidates, rightfully and deservedly so. So deservedly. Like, that's part of the reason why. All right. Shannon, because, go, go ahead, go ahead. M M Molly, I want to say because yeah. I played in this oh. offense and we had Terrell Davis and we had John Elway. John mm -hmm. Elway was already a Hall of Fame quarterback before Terrell Davis set foot. But what TD allowed us to do with his ability to run the football, when we fake, when John would fake that ball, Ed and Rod and myself, we had we were scot free. You have to worry about Christian McCaffrey because yeah. if you don't, don't drop that guy down in the box, now all of a sudden he's four or five yards into the, before he's getting touched. So that's why I believe yeah. he's the most important, even though Brock Purdy is having a sensational season. 